Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Mubashir Fazal, Medical Director and Sleep Specialist at Bessel Sleep Center. We welcome everyone. I want to make sure we make a difference to your life as well as sleep issues and we want to listen to all your problems and individualize the treatment plan. So give us your opportunity and we'll be happy to help you. Today we're going to learn more about sleep studies. Why we do them, it's important to realize that sleep studies are an important part of diagnostic studies. Today we are going to learn about sleep studies and my aim is to make sure we educate the most important things. You'll be seeing later on how it's done, but I want to make sure that we take care for all your sleep evaluation. So first step is to make sure realize that why we do sleep studies and the reason is because there are some risk factors or symptoms you are having. So some of those which I will highlight, if you have sleepiness, feel tired, exhausted, snoring, and very common sleep divorce where couples cannot sleep together anymore, then there is a problem with sleep and sleep issues they are having. So this is important because a lot of referrals I get or phone calls, I must say, I get is from wife, not from husband. So that is important to realize that, that men tend to ignore some of those symptoms and wife actually brings that to my attention. So other things which are important are if you are fatigued, concentration issues, and for kids, it's very important that if they have problem with hyperactivity and behavior issues, they should be checked. Mm -hmm. Some of the risk factors are BMI being high, neck size over 17, and also they have gained weight, especially more than 10%. And if they are having snoring, sleepiness, fatigue, then it needs to be evaluated. What it needs to happen here, we wanna first make sure we have a diagnosis, correct diagnosis, what the problem is, and we diagnose by doing sleep study. Some of those are either in lab, where you come in person in our sleep centers, or it'll be at home sleep study. So those two are the diagnostic techniques we use and we offer both of them. In the next segment, you'll be hearing voice of snoring as well as normal breathing. <laughs> then again, the airway tries to open it up and there's a partial opening which is hypopnea. And then the airway shuts down and body tries to breathe more and more. And then next thing you will be watching is how it's done. This is uh, a patient being picked up for the sleep study. And uh, the technician is getting ready for the hookup. And these will be frontal leads. So these belts are the position sensor as well as the chest movement. Uh, they tell if you are on your back, side, or um, sideways. Um, so it measures your chest movement as well as abdominal movement. The oxygen is monitored by this pulse oximeter. It consists of leads. Um, on the scalp as well as for the eye movements yes. and the thoracic belt and the chest belt. titration study will be using either CPAP or BiPAP and using pressure to alleviate symptoms and events and also using nasal or full face mask. The 
these are how the tenants will look when we look at your raw data and we are looking at some of the monitors showing brain waves as well as some snoring and some breathing movement and oxygen at the bottom and EKG leads. So this is example how we look at the raw data. This is an important slide I want to emphasize here. Look at the common sleep disorders which are sleep apnea, insomnia, narcolepsy, periodic leg movement disorder and important is weight gain. So there are a lot of studies indicating that there is a reciprocal relationship between weight gain and sleep apnea and it feeds itself to each other which means it makes it harder for somebody to lose weight. Also important is look at the numbers. Sleep apnea affects more than 30 million people. Over 75% of these have not been treated and that's a big number. Unfortunately, one third could be asymptomatic completely. And look at the end organ problems with hypertension, heart attack, stroke, sudden cardiac death, fatigue, motor vehicle accident, name it. And 80% of people with uncontrolled hypertension could have underlying problems with sleep apnea. Same 50% with congestive heart failure, especially the rhythm disorders, atrial fibrillation and then 30% with coronary artery disease and remember the famous saying from Mark Twain don't go to sleep too many people die there so but the good news is we are here to help you and we can take excellent care for your needs also important is that if we have hypersomnia or excessive sleepiness then we might need evaluation to do MSLT. Now, MSLT has two portions. One is overnight portion, where we determine that you have enough sleep. And also, if you have other problems, such as sleep apnea or so forth, we would know that. And second is daytime, which consists of five naps usually. And if these are spaced out, and we give opportunity to fall asleep, make sure that you are off your medication, especially stimulants, before the study and not taking any medication to make you sleepy night before and you achieve enough sleep. The aim is to find out if you fall asleep within normal range or not. So we are trying to figure out between sleep and wake cycle and that if it's performing normally, problem can happen is sometimes those two cycle can have problems and there's a switch between wake and sleep cycle and that flip-flop switch can be faulty at times and why that happens then we'll be talking more in detail when we do your consultation so it involves five naps and we will be doing evaluating that you fall asleep within normal range and if you do are you dreaming or not and that helps us to determine whether you have hypersomnia which is excessive sleepiness or narcolepsy which could be more disorder and if you have additional symptoms and then we'll be discussing that more in detail with you if you have any questions check out our website We'll be very happy to help you. Take care. Thank you.